Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. And the Dragonflight Alpha is almost upon us. Either going live at some point later today or maybe even tomorrow. Recently, a bunch of creators as well as press got to get the very first preview of the Dragonflight Alpha to test it out early. For the most part, this preview focused on the very first zone, the Isle of Dorn. It also let players test out a bunch of new hero talents as well as all of the different class changes available in this very first build of the Alpha. As expected, players got to group up together to test out new dungeons, but also test out some of the delves, which is a form of endgame progression that's coming out with this expansion. And while we don't have all of the details behind the endgame that's going to be coming with the first season of War Within, we do have a bit of a preview with the list of dungeons available for the season 1, some of the new mechanical ideas that's going to be implemented in the raid, but also a ton of new character models, transmogs, mounts, and so many other collectibles that you'll be able to earn in this expansion. So for today's video, I wanted to do an entire overview of the early build that some players got to test out for the alpha and everything new that we've learned so far. But right before we get into this early alpha preview, most of you guys watching these kind of videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you remind, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you want to get more regular content regarding Dragonflight Patch 10-6, 10-7, Season 4 or any of the future War Within updates. Starting out with exploration of the Alpha, we have the very first zone, the Isle of Dorne. The Alpha testing is going to do focus testing similar to what they've done for the expansion of Dragonflight, where instead of having all zones ready for testing, players will be funneled into one zone at a time to maximize the testing of that specific zone. This includes testing out the new leveling, questing, treasures and rares and bonus objectives to make sure all of these zones features functionally work. And if you do get into the alpha, don't expect to be able to make a max level character early on. We'll first start off with the entry level zone, which means entry level characters. But as we get throughout all of the different builds of the alpha and eventually into the beta, that's more or less when I would expect some end game testing, which is probably going to happen about the same time as patch 10 to 7 goes live over in Dragonflight. One of the early changes coming to questing and some of the rewards that you'll obtain in War Within is the feature of first time quest rewards. The War Within expansion is going to shift its focus to be more alt friendly, becoming more account wide focused rather than character specifically focused, at least when it comes to basic progression. So completing a quest for the first time on your main character is going to allow your entire account to earn a nice warband bonus, which usually is going to be some sort of reputation or some sort of reward that's going to be with that faction. This means that doing some of these important quests is going to be necessary to do on at least one character, but having to complete these quests again on your alts is going to be less necessary for the overall leveling progression. Also, one of the best ways of earning a reputation early on with this expansion, like any others, will be faction quests. Humans, however, do have a racial bonus, which allows them to gain additional reputation from all faction quest lines. This racial bonus, however, is going to be changed in the War Within, as no race in the game should be able to get any kind of rep bonuses going forward, which means you don't necessarily have to change over to a human before this expansion to maximize your reputation gains going forward. Another feature that players get to test over on the Alpha is Hero Talents. And whenever Alpha officially goes live in the Battle.net, all Hero Talents are going to be made available for players to test. So far, we've only been able to cover only a handful of Hero Talents over the last few months, but Alpha is going to open all of them up at once so players can test them out properly. All of the talents are going to be functional, but there's going to be a lot more iterations when it comes to balancing and tuning, so changes are expected to happen over our time during War Within testing. Currently, not all of them are available for preview on websites such as Wowhead, not until we get the official alpha on the Battle.net, but six new hero specs have been showcased recently by Blizzard themselves. This includes the Sentinel Hunters who will mark their targets, summoning spectral owls and focus on arcane damage, Sun Fury mages who strike at their targets will spell fire attacks, Master of Harmony monks who unleash a lot of stored up damage and healing whenever consuming celestial brews. Oracle Priests, which have recently gone through quite a rework, Void Weaver Priests, which open up new rifts into the Eternal Void, and Soul Harvester Warlocks, which will gain newly empowered Soul Shards. Some of the content that was available for the early alpha preview were the Dells, which is one of the new endgame forms of progression coming out in the War Within. 
Delves is Blizzard's answer to turning solo, open world, casual content into a form of end game progression. The purpose of these delves is to focus on the casual community and how they interact with World of Warcraft and creating an entire end game mode just for them. The casual audience of World of Warcraft is a big focus when it comes to this mode and they're looking for a lot of feedback over the next few weeks. From what we've seen of the delves so far, we know there's going to be tiers of difficulty. For now, it's difficult to tell if the tiers as well as the rewards are going to be connected, like the higher difficulty delves are going to award better gear or better rewards, but it will likely end up being similar to the Mage Tower. The Mage Tower in general was fairly successful. A lot of players enjoyed it back in Legion and when they brought it back during the expansion of Shadowlands. So we may have a situation where we're creating a new form of solo progression that has a set amount of difficulty, but gives players something to grind towards to obtain some of the better rewards. As for the rewards for delves, it's going to feature gear, heroic equivalent gear, which allows players a new avenue of collecting their tier set bonuses, but also a set of seasonal and cosmetic rewards that are going to change from tier to tier. We also got a bit more info regarding the account-wide everything form of Warbands, another feature coming out in the War Within, which is going to help bind all our characters closer together. From the achievements window, we also see that new account wide completion is going to be enabled where you can start a portion of achievement on one character and then finish it out on another, which is a big quality of life boost. Things like flight points are going to be shared across all of your characters also. Currency can now be transferred easily across any of your alts with a click of a button, which allows you to just transfer currency from one character to the next without having to do some kind of a weird vendor exchange we had to do in previous expansions. Warbands will also get access to a Warbound Bank, where all of your characters' gold, currencies, as well as items can also be shared across their entire account. We also get some more info regarding the dynamic flying system coming in War Within, which is a converted version of the dragon riding system of Dragonflight, but adjusted so that more mounts, besides dragons, can also get access to the same style of flying mode. Basically, all flying mounts will get access to dynamic flight in the War Within even mechanical flying machines, flying horses, and even flying cradles. All mounts are going to be able to switch between normal flying, which is like the more familiar TBC type of flying, as well as the new dynamic flight added for Dragonflight. And in the Dragon Riding talent skills are also being brought into the Sky Riding talent tree, which basically takes parts of that talent tree and adds them so they can be accessed everywhere else in the open world. This will also host some of the more familiar talents from the Dragon Riding system, like bonus Vigor Regeneration talents and maneuverability abilities that you can now better customize. This is a big fan favorite movement system, and it's good to see them expanding it further going forward for this expansion. And while none of the endgame content has been fully revealed for this early alpha preview, we do get more information regarding the Season 1 of the War Within content with things like the first raid of War Within being in the very depths of the Ashka Head Zone. It's a new Rubian raid which is going to weave in some spider specific mechanics. Like imagine players climbing up webs in order to chase after a boss for one of the boss encounters or something like that. And it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of content and mechanics they're going to be able to pull off. For those of you that have a crippling arachnophobia, like I do, they also added a mode specifically for you, which allows you to replace the models of all spider creatures and bosses with crabs and lobsters, and it's going to be very interesting to test out this mode during the alpha or beta. For Season 1 and Plus content, we got our very first list of seasonal dungeons. The Season 1 list will be very similar to the Dragonflight list and will include 4 dungeons from the most recent expansion, The War Within, with Ara, Kara, City of Echoes, City of Threads, the Stone Vault and the Dawnbreaker being The War Within dungeons, but also we have 4 non-expansion dungeons which will even have the return of some of the Shadowland dungeon content added, including things like Mists of Tirnasai, the Necrotic Wake, as well as Siege of Boralus from Battle for Azeroth and Grim Batal from Cataclysm. So far, the early reactions for these have been pleasant, except for the last two dungeons on this list, and I really do hope they see some mechanical changes for both Boralus as well as Grim Batal. Boralus in particular wasn't all that well liked back in BFA, except for the final season of BFA, where you had this void portals where you could skip certain trash packs entirely, making the entire dungeon much, much easier to interact with. The other one is Grim Batal. It's going to be weird to see how they're going to do the whole dragon flyby section where you need to mount on a drake, blast through as many mobs, and then depending on how many enemies you cleared, you might have an easier or harder dungeon experience. So hopefully both of those instances will see some notable changes. 
Lastly, for this alpha preview, while the new Earthen Dwarves Allied race was not ready to be played on the alpha, we did get some information regarding some of the races they may have once the game finally launches. First of all, their main ability is going to be an Azerite Surge. It's an empowerment skill similar to the empowerment abilities given to the class of the Evoker, where the rank 1 ability or rank 1 version of their empowerment skill is going to help them deal fire damage to all foes. Rank 2 is going to heal allies, and Rank 3 will put a damage over time effect on the highest health enemy. Some of the passives for them are going to include ingest minerals, where earthen dwarves don't actually consume food, instead they eat ore and minerals, but consuming certain gems will allow them to gain specific secondary stats. They have Hyper Productive, which gains some more finesse from gathering materials. Titan's Rod Frame, which simply grants some additional armor from gear and items, which actually is kind of a big racial depending on just how much physical protection this passive is going to provide. But also Wide-Eyed Wanderer, which allows him to gain additional experience from exploration, which is actually kind of neat as a passive racial. But for now, this is going to be everything we got so far regarding the early preview for the War Within Alpha, which should hopefully be going live either today or tomorrow or at some point this week, but we do know that it's going to be happening over these next few days. As always, I want to thank all of you so much for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think about this early alpha preview in the comments down below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.